Hello, this is Mark Hilliard with Beyond 20. Today I'm going to talk about a slightly more complex function that you can do in Surewell. Uh, we are all fairly familiar with the customer survey, and the way that Sherwell used to use the customer survey object was it was actually a web form. Uh, the web forms site, it's called Sherwell Web Forms, is available to all customers. You do not actually have to log in or have credentials in order to utilize it. Now, originally, Sherwell used this for customer surveys, but we have found that there are some additional fairly useful things you can do with web forms. One of them is if you need customers to be able to submit tickets to Sherwell anonymously. Now, keep in mind that there are several moving parts to this, and I'm only going to go over them in general detail today. Uh, the first thing you need to do is you need to create a supporting object to represent this anonymous ticket. And what it is is just going to be a basic form, real straightforward, this is my name, this is my contact information, this is my problem, or this is my request. Um, we don't know who you are, we don't know you haven't logged in, so we don't have your username or any other information. But we still want to allow you to submit a ticket into Sherwell. So we create this supporting object and create a form for it with this basic information on it. Um, and we can do that quickly here. I'm going to call it anonymous web form. I'm going to go ahead and show it in one steps in Expression Manager. That's just a habit of mine uh, for supporting objects. I want to make sure that if I need to write a one step within that particular form, I can do so. Let's just do name 50. Let's say, well, well please type name correctly. <laughs> uh, phone, email, issue. And that's it. That's all we really want. Great. So now we've got this newly minted object. Let's go ahead and use our form wizard to create the form. And sure, let's use the blue theme. Why not? So there it is. Now, maybe I don't want it to say anonymous web form up here. Maybe I would like it to say something like um, submit a question or something along those lines. And I can simply just ask them to fill out this basic information for me. Um, once they do that, they submit it, and it creates that record internally in Surewell. Now, the second part of this is I have to create an automated process to pick up this particular new form and create an incident from it, create a ticket, essentially. Um, rather than using the incident form, which is going to require a whole lot of data that maybe we're not going to be able to get out of someone who doesn't have credentials to log in, we can give them this simple form, and then we can use the internal automation process engine of Surewell to create that ticket. What I like to do is go ahead and create the automation process. Um, in fact, add a new, an additional field here. Let's call it something like processed. Make that a logical field. And so what will happen is when the first automation process fires off to create the ticket, it'll flag this as processed. And then another process comes in behind that and deletes this. I don't like to do them at the same time just in case there's some sort of problem um, and it deletes, you know, I don't want to accidentally delete the, this form before it gets created as a ticket. Um, so I actually do it as two separate automated processes. But the nice thing about that is that now you can create the ticket and then clear these out as you move forward. Now, how do we call the web forms? Well, uh, Sherwell Web Forms is the, uh, the actual subdomain or the actual directory that it's located in. So while you have something like Sherwell Portal in your URL for the portal, Sherwell Web Forms uh, represents this, uh, this particular site that we would be using. Um, there is a commandlet for it. Um, basically, it's JavaScript. Um, and that URL would then point to create this particular type of web form. If we take a look, one of the other automation processes, we're going to be taking a look here at incident. There is a send survey process. As you can see, once an incident is closed, we have this action that sends out, runs a one step to create the survey and sends the survey out. If you take a look at this one step, 
it will give you insight as to how to set up your URL. It's fairly cool, actually. Make this a little larger to see everything. But here is the email that goes out, and you will see a link created right here. If we go to our properties for that link, you will see this is the URL you want to go to. Sherwell Web Forms and then forward slash question mark command equals edit and bizob name equals customer survey and rec ID equals the rec ID of the customer survey. Now there is also a create command that you can utilize right here and in that case we do a create with the bizob name being your new anonymous web form and there would be no rec ID associated since you're actually creating that new record. But you go ahead and create that link and you can put it on your portal. Uh, essentially, you can make it a menu item or you could put it right on that home page. Um, and then people do not actually have to log in in order to fill out a web form and submit a ticket to your system. If you have questions about this, I certainly encourage you to reach out to our professional services team. We would be happy to discuss it with you. You can reach us by going to our website at www.beyond20.com, clicking on Contact Us, and submitting your questions or queries. And also be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Beyond 20 LLC.